Hello and welcome to Abi Times UK. The plight of the persecuted Muslim Rohingya in Myanmar has been alighted in recent weeks after thousands of people fled the South Asian country asking for asylum. The 1.3 million Rohingya in Myanmar are regarded as stateless people and unwelcome migrants from Bangladesh and live in segregated conditions. We spoke with Anna Roberts, Executive Director at Burma Campaign UK, on the persecution of the Rohingya, which reports warn has resulted in alleged massacres. The persecution of the Rohingya Muslim minority in Burma has been going on for many, many years now. Um, of course, successive military dictatorships in Burma have had policies of repression and persecution against Burma's many different ethnic minorities, but the policies uh, implemented against the Rohingya have been particularly severe. And since President Thein Sein came to power in 2011, those policies of repression have really stepped up. We see really a sort of twin track policies being implemented by Thein Sein's government, really in order to try and make life so unbearable for Rohingya Muslims that they flee the country. And of course, for President Thein Sein, this is a policy that sadly seems to be working. So the policies are, are, are one in terms of trying to uh, impoverish uh, the Rohingya people by denying them the possibility for economic development, so restricting land rights, uh, restricting movement, restrictions on health and education, even in marriage as well. And of course lately we've seen those restrictions increase. Just uh, a few weeks ago the temporary registration cards for Rohingya were removed by President Thein Sein, denying them the right to vote. There is a very worrying rise of anti-Muslim uh, feeling in Burma. Now, the, the causes of this are, are complicated and long-standing. There's a, a sort of long-standing historical co connection between uh, Buddhism and nationalism and Burmese identity in Burma. Sort of during colonial times, the fight against British colonialism was led by Buddhists. The fact is that the hate speech, the anti-Muslim propaganda is being organised, is very well funded. We see extremist monks travelling around the country preaching this kind of hate speech, uh, race hatred, and that they are very well sort of funded and backed and supported. So this is a very systematic campaign that is going on in Burma. It's not just rising up from the grassroots, it's well organised, it's well funded, and it's backed by the, the, the highest uh, authorities. The Rohingya have been dubbed by the UN as the world's most persecuted ethnic minority. It is estimated that at least 25,000 Rohingya have fled Myanmar since the beginning of 2015. More than 230 people have been killed in religious violence in Myanmar since June 2012, and more than 140,000 have been displaced. Recent reports have also warned that Rohingya women who were taken hostage at human trafficking camps in Thailand and Malaysia have been gang raped by their kidnappers. The international response has been very disappointing. In terms of the, the recent crisis with refugees and Bangladeshi migrants stranded at sea, after the international pressure there has been some response in the countries such as Indonesia and Malaysia have said that they will accept refugees stranded on the boats. So in a sense that is welcome but of course what really needs to happen is for the international community to address the root causes of why these people, uh, why the Rohingya are fleeing Burma. So we need to see action at the highest level taken to address this and that's why we think Ban Ki-moon should personally take the lead in negotiating that humanitarian access. But also we need to see strong efforts by the international community to address the human rights abuses. Now, these are abuses that are so severe, organisations like Human Rights Watch have, said, have documented abuses that they say fit the criteria for ethnic cleansing. Experts in genocide are saying you know, there are warning signs that precursors to genocide are happening in Burma. So these are some of the most serious human rights abuses that breach international law and we need to see a reaction and a response from the international community that um, responds to these serious abuses.